السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى سيدنا ومولانا الإمام محمد الجواد عليه السلام قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف ضرب الله مثلا كلمة طيبة كشجرة طيبة أصلها ثابت وفرعها في السماء تؤتي أكلها كل حين بإذن ربها ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس لعلهم يتذكرون صدق الله العلي العظيم Tonight is the eve of the last day and the end of the month of Dil Qa'dah On Wednesday is the first day Wednesday is going to be the first day of the month of Dil Hijjah on the last day of the Qa'da is the anniversary, the anniversary of the martyrdom of the ninth Imam of the school of Ahlul Bayt. Al Imam Muhammad ibn Ali al Jawad. His father is Al Imam Ali ibn Musa al Rida. His grandfather is Al Imam Musa ibn Ja'far al Kadhim. Alayhim as salam. And his mother was named Khayzuran. She was an African female slave, a bondmaid from Biladun Noba. And Biladun Noba is the region along the Nile River. Specifically, Noba is in southern Egypt and Sudan, today Sudan. That is Biladun Noba. So she was African. She was a female slave. She was brought to Medina. Al Imam Ali ibn Musa al Rida purchased her and she was pregnant by him and he freed her. And she is the mother of Imam Muhammad al Jawad. And therefore, Imam Muhammad al Jawad was docked skin he was a brown because he took after his mother who was from africa imam muhammad al jawad born in year 195 in the city of medina al munawar and died in baghdad in the year 220 hijri so his life lasted only 25 years only 25 years He's the youngest of all the Imams, the very youngest. Before him, his grandmother, Lady Fatima to Zahra, passed away at the age of 18. He was the second one who passed away and was poisoned at the age of 25 during the Khilafat of Al Mu'tasim ibn Harun al Abbasi in the city of Baghdad. So he lived most of his life in Medina except the last nine or ten months when he was forced by the Mu'tasim to move from Medina to Baghdad and then he was poisoned by his wife the wife of Imam al-Jawad which is Umm al-Fadl the daughter of the Caliph al-Ma'mun al-Abbasi who was the Caliph before is a brother Mu'tasim. Ma'mun lasted for almost 20 years, his Khilafat, his reign. And he forced Imam al Rida to marry his daughter. Not because he wanted to honor the Imam, though he pretended all the time that he is enchanted with and fascinated by Imam al Jawad and by his intelligence and by his knowledge and by his virtue and by his generosity. This is why he wanted to give him his daughter, Umm al-Fadl. 
But in reality, he wanted to limit the Imam and limit his movement and to spy on the Imam. This was the purpose of giving his daughter uh, Umm al-Fadl to Imam al-Jawad alayhi salam. And of course, they didn't have any children. Imam al-Jawad did not have children from this particular wife, Umm al-Fadl. So he died in Baghdad and he's buried next to his grandfather, Imam Musa ibn Ja'far al-Kazim, in where it is called today Al-Kazimain or Al-Kazimiyah uh, Al or Al-Jawadain. His father, Imam Ali ibn Musa al-Ridha, also was killed by Ma'mun al-Abbasi in the city of Tus in the region of Khurasan in year 203 Hijri, 17 years before the martyrdom of Imam Muhammad al-Jawad. When the Imam was probably seven or eight years old, his father Imam al-Ridha died. So the Imam of Imam al-Jawad started in 203 Hijri until 220 Hijri, a total of 17 years. Then he died at the age of 25. And the Imam, my friends, let me read the hadith for you. The Imam is Ahdun min Allahi wa Rasulih. It's a covenant. The Imam is transferred through the Imams through the chain of the Imams. It's not like monarchy. It's Ahd, a covenant from God and from his apostle. This is Usul al-Kafi, volume number one, Kitab al-Hujjah. Kitab al-Hujjah, an, an ibn Abi Umayrin, an Hamad ibn Uthman, an Amr ibn al-Ash'ath, qal sami'tu Aba Abdullah, I heard the sixth Imam, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam, yaqul, أترون الموصي منا يوصي إلى من يريد? Do you think that one of us, the Imams, we bequeath the Imam to whomsoever that we choose? No, it is not. It's not our own choice. But it is, لا والله. Nay, by God. It's not our own choice. وَلَكِنْ عَهْدٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ It's a covenant. It's a trust by God. The choice belongs to, the, to God. And the declaration is made by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We read during the month of Ramadan from the books of Sahih in the Sunni tradition that the Prophet said, Al-Khulafa'u min ba'di in one sentence, in another sentence, Al-Umara'u min ba'di, Ithnay Ashar. There are 12 successors after me. And those are the successors, the Imams of Ahlul Bayt. وَلَكِنْ عَهْدٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لِرَجُلٍ فَرَجُلٍ This covenant is passed man, a man by a man, by another man, followed by a man. Followed from one man into another. حَتَّى يَنْتَهِ الْأَمْرُ إِلَى صَاحِبِهِ Until the Imam would end to the last Imam, which is the 12th Imam. This is one hadith. The second hadith is that the earth would not remain, not even for one day, without an Imam which has been ordained and appointed by God. Again, if we read this hadith, in Allah, again in book of uh, Al-Kafi, Sahih Al-Kafi, Kitab Al-Hujjah, in Al-Arda La Takhlu Min Hujjah. This earth, and what is meant by earth, the universe, the entire universe, not just the, the planet earth, would not be vacant, not even for a single day, from an appointee, appointee, which is the proof of God, the legitimacy of God. Hujja means legitimacy of God. God brings an Imam, 
So according to the Quran, according to this book, the Holy Quran, people do not stand before God on the day of judgment and, send, and say to him, well, you did not send a leader to us. We were left without a leader. God is not leaving this earth without a scholar. An alim here is the imam, not just any scholar. If we do not have imam, we cannot distinguish between truth and falsehood. An Abi Basir and An Abi Abdullah al Sadiq alayhi salatu was salam. Imam al Sadiq, the sixth Imam, says, Qala in Allah a jellu wa a'vamu min an yetruk al arda bigayri imam in adil. God is too great and too exalted, exalted from leaving the earth, from leaving the earth without an imam who's just. And a just imam is appointed by God. And then an Abi Ja'far, this is Imam al-Baqir, قال, والله ما ترك الله أرضا منذ قبض آدم. God never left the earth since the death of Adam. إلا وفيها إمام يهتدى به إلى الله وهو حجته على عباده. But to leave. An imam, it could be prophet, it could be messenger. Ibrahim السلام, was a messenger and he was Imam. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a messenger and he was Imam. And sometimes it's only an Imam. God leaves behind an Imam who is the legitimacy of God, who is the proof of God upon his servants. The earth would not remain, is not going to remain, not even for a single day, with an imam without being appointed by God. Now, when Imam al Rida died, his son Imam Muhammad al Jawad was seven years and a few months, and he became the imam. So the big question here, how does that happen? A boy of seven years old can be an imam? Yes. Where is the answer? Do you have an answer in the Quran? Yes, we do have an answer in the Quran in this book. Go to chapter 19, Surat Maryam. Surat Maryam alayhi salam. God says about Yahya, Ya Yahya, verse number 12. Chapter 19, verse number 12. Ya Yahya khudil kitaba biquwatin wa atainahu al-hukma sabiyya. O Yahya, O John, John the Baptist, take this book with strength. God has given him the scripture, the book. Take this book, this scripture with strength. وَأَتَيْنَاهُ الْحُكْمِ And we have given him the judgment, and the judgment is a prophet. Here, in this contest, in this context, means, it means what? It means prophethood. وَأَتَيْنَاهُ الْحُكْمَ صَبِيَّةً A child. We have given him a prophethood while he was a child. صَبِيَّةً So yes, it happens. And in fact, someone came, To check the Imam out. He said, I came and I looked after the death of Imam al Rida. I came and I looked at Imam al Jawad. He's a boy. So I started checking him out from head to toe. So when I go back to Egypt, I would describe him our friends, the followers of Ahlul Bayt in Egypt. So Imam realized his name is Ali ibn Asbat. So the Imam realized that Ali is checking him out and he was amazed how come a boy becomes an imam inherits the imama the khilafa from his father this is again this is usul al-kafi volume number one 
كتاب الحجة page 448 فقال يا علي إن الله احتج في الإمامة God used the إمامة as a proof as an argument against those who deny who reject احتج في الإمامة بمثل ما احتج به في النبوة He used the same argument of the إمامة similar to the argument of Nubuwa, prophethood. فقال وآتيناه الحكم صبية God said in chapter 19 about John, we have given him the prophethood while he is a child. And then, and he, and he said in Surah Yusuf, وَلَمَّا بَلَغَ أَشُدَّهُ When Yusuf reached the age of maturity, and he said, in Surah Al-Ahqaf, وَبَلَغَ أَرْبَعِينَ السَّنَةِ When he reached the age of 40, فَقَدْ يَجُوزُ It could be possible that God gives الْحِكْمَةَ وَهْوَ صَبِيٌّ فَقَدْ يَجُوزُ أَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ وَهْوَ صَبِيٌّ He can receive the prophethood while he's a boy, he's a child. وَيَجُوزُ أَنْ يُؤْتَاهَا وَهْوَ إِبْنُ أَرْبَعِينَ السَّنَةِ And he could receive it receive the prophethood while he's in his 40s. Just like Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He can give it to the child and he give, give it to an adult. It doesn't depend on an age. Allahu a'lamu haythu yaj'alu risalata. God knows best where to place his message. In what person places his message. And this is Surah Al-An'am. Chapter num uh, number 6, verse number 124. Allahu a'lamu haythu yaj'alu risalata. It's up to him. God knows best where to place his message. With what a prophet, with what imam. This is the difference between prophethood and imama on the one hand and worldly positions on the other hand. In a worldly position, like the mayor, the governor, the president, the chief of a tribe. You have to have certain age. In America, you cannot be nominated for a presidency unless you are, Ali, how old? Uh, 35. Like 35. Minimum 35. But when it comes to God, when it comes to divinely ordain, ordination, divine appointment, it has no age limit. Again, where is that? It's in the Quran, a second story. The first story was about John. The second one about Jesus himself, Surah Maryam, chapter 19, verse, verse 29. When Mary carried the baby Jesus after giving birth to him, she came back to her village. The community was waiting for her. They saw her, a virgin lady, carrying a baby, newborn baby. You came up with something, you know, amazing. What is this? You're carrying a baby with you? يَا أُخْتَ هَارُونَ مَا كَانَ أَبُوكِ امْرَأَ سَوْئٍ Your dad was not an evil person. وَمَا كَانَتْ أُمُّكِ بَغِيَّ Your mother was not a lady who was unchast. فَأَشَارَتْ إِلَيْهِ She pointed to the baby. قَالُوا كَيْفَ نُكَلِّمُ مَنْ كَانَ فِي الْمَهْدِ صَبِيَّ How can we speak, we communicate with a child, a baby in the cradle? Here Jesus said, قَالَ إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ آتَانِيَ الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيَّ I'm the servant, the slave of God. He has given me the scripture, the book. وَجَعَلَنِي He appointed me, ordained me a prophet. وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيَّ وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتْ وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيَّ This is a second proof from the Qur'an. Jesus was a child and he became prophet. John was a child when he became prophet. And God knows what to do. He knows his job. He knows who to choose.
It's not by election. It's not by age. It's not by age. It's by knowledge, by piety, by wisdom, by divine inspiration. These are the important elements of Nubuwa and Imama both. The difference between Imama, the difference of Imama from Nubuwa, from prophethood, the Prophet receives Ataniel Kitab, receives the scripture, the book. The Imam does not receive a book, revelation, but he continues the path of the Prophet, that he succeeds, because he's a successor, wasi, a successor to the Prophet. Quraysh did not want to accept this. Quraysh were arguing with the Prophet Muhammad. The Sahaba of the Prophet, his companions, were arguing with him when he appointed during the last days of his life, Usama. He appointed Usama, who was only 18, to be the leader of that military expedition that is going to go north on the border with the Roman Empire. They said, how can he choose someone who's only 18? We have people in their 50s and 60s and 70s. And a Prophet Muhammad chooses someone who's only 18. They refused. For them, age is important. And even when Imam Ali was appointed by the Prophet and God as successor to the Prophet, you know why they refused him? They said, he's too young. He's only 33. But God says in this book, age is not an issue. We know who to choose. Allahu a'lamu haythu yaj'alu risalata. Let's go back to Imam al-Jawad alayhi salam. Imam al-Jawad, as I said, let me show you a couple of sentences here of some of the great Sunni scholars. How they speak about this man who was very young but very intelligent and very knowledgeable. Al-Allama Sibtu Sibtu ibn al-Jawzi al-Hanafi. He's a Hanafi scholar, died in 654 Hijri. When he speaks about Imam al-Jawad, he says, Wa Muhammad al-Imam Abu Ja'far al-Thani, because Abu Ja'far al-Awwal is Imam al-Baqir. Imam al-Jawad is Abu Ja'far al-Thani, the second Abu Ja'far. Kana ala minhaji abih, he followed the path of his father, which father? Imam Ali al Rida, fil ilmi in knowledge, wat tuqa in piety, was zuhd in, in uh, asceticism, zuhd, renouncing the dunya, wal jud, and generosity. Kamaluddin Muhammad ibn Talha Shafi'i, another Shafi'i scholar who died in 652 says the following about Imam al-Jawad. He says, وَإِن كَانَ صَغِيرَ sin, Though he was young in age, فَهْوَ كَبِيرُ الْقَدْرِ But he is big in value, in stature. رَفِيعُ dhikr. His reputation is great. This is how they describe Imam Muhammad al-Jawad. Now, Imam lived during the time of Ma'moon, most of his time was during the reign of Ma'moon al-Abbasi, the Abbasid Caliph in Baghdad, who killed his father. Ma'moon was the one who murdered Imam Ali ibn Musa al-Rida in Khurasan. And then he lived during the reign of al-Mu'tasim al-Abbasi. Ma'moon was different from those who came before him and those who came after him. Harun had many children. The first one was Al-Amin, who was murdered by Ma'moon. And after Ma'moon was Al-Mu'tasim. Those people were not people of knowledge, not even people of intelligence. Some of those children of Harun were really stupid. This is what history says about them. They were shallow in their thinking, shallow in their mind. Ma'moon was different. Ma'moon, his mother was from Khurasan. Before him, Amin, his mother is Arab. After him, Mu'tasim, his mother is Turk. Ma'moon was a very cunning, foxy, 
shrewd politician, manip manipulative. He knew how to deal with politics. And therefore, because he was in trouble, because he murdered his brother Al-Amin before him, and he earned the wrath and the anger of the Abbasid because he murdered his brother. And there were revolts against him led by a man called Abu Saraya. In many provinces, they revolted against Ma'mun al-Abbasi. And he put down that revolt or revolutions. He pretended all the times that he loves Imam al-Ridha and he loves Imam al-Jawad and therefore he offered Imam al-Ridha alayhi salam the regency, the wilayatul ahd to become the crown prince but then he poisoned the Imam and he killed him in Tus and then he pretended that he loves Imam al-Jawad and he is enchanted by him and his knowledge and his piety. This is why he offered him to marry his daughter Umm al-Fadl. And then he pretended that he loves the Shia and he loves Ahlul Bayt. And he, at one point, he offered the Khilafah for Imam al Ridha. He said to Imam al Ridha, Inni qad ra'ayt. I see that I, I take off this Khilafah from myself and I give it to you. But he was not true. He was not genuine. He was not sincere. He was jealous of Imam al Ridha. And he was jealous of Imam al Jawad too. He's a politician. Can you trust a politician? Especially when he speaks in the name of Islam, in the name of God. Especially when he calls himself Amir al muminin The worst politician is the one who calls himself Amir al muminin He's even, even worse than the atheist, than the non-Muslims. Because this is a double standard. He's cheating on people and he's cheating on Islam. This was the Ma'mun al-Abbasi. But he always pretended that he's Shia. Some historians consider al mamul Abbasi to be Shia because he said always that Imam Ali is better than the Shaykhain, the Khulafa. And then he returned the land of Fadak to the Ala, Alawiyin, the children of Ali and Fatima alayhim as -salam. And he respected Imam al Ridha, he respected Imam al Jawad. But it was a show, it was not real. It was a theatrical show to consolidate his base. Why? Because he knew people's heart are with Ahlul Bayt. So he decided to be with Ahlul Bayt to win people's hearts and minds and bring legitimacy to his rule because he was desperate for legitimacy, especially after he murdered his brother Al Amin. And then he created a fitna. A commotion called Fitna to Khalq al Quran. And that was in year 212, before he murdered Imam al Jawad and after he murdered Imam al Ridha during that period of time, 212 Hijri. Fitna to Khalq al Quran, which means that whether the Quran is ancient, this book is ancient, predestined, or this book was revealed and it's a fresh and it's a new book. Something which really does not have that much value, but he created this to keep people busy because tyrants, dictators, those cunning rulers, they always try to keep people busy with something. So people do not think about leadership, who's ruling over them, okay? So he created this and and of course, he punished. If people do not believe in his opinion, scholars, they will be jailed. They will be executed. One of the people who was punished by the Abbasides was uh, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. So he forced Imam al-Jawad to marry his daughter. Abbasiyun came to him and they said to him, how do you give your daughter to to this man, you can't. This man from the children of Ali ibn Abi Talib, and this man is going to hijack the imama after you. He said, no, 
This man deserves to be the Imam. Let me read for you from the book of Bihar al-Anwar, a story. How Al-Ma'mun al-Abbasi asked the Chief Justice Yahya ibn Aktham, the most knowledgeable, the Chief Justice of his state. And that time, the state was not only Iraq. It was a huge country. The Islamic land was very huge at that time. Okay. So he said to him, come and meet Muhammad al-Jawad, Imam Muhammad al-Jawad, though the Imam was a teenager at that time, teenager, okay? And ask him a question and see if he answers, then he's a qualified. If he doesn't answer, then I'm not going to give him my daughter. So they gathered all the scholars, the officials. Yahya ibn Aktham asked the Imam, ما تقول جعلت فداك ما تقول في محرم قتل صيدا what is the answer what is your fiqh opinion on someone on the in the state of consecration ihram who hunts a game what do you think so the imam asked him فقال ابو جعفر قتله في حل او حرم when he killed this hunt, this game, was he inside the area of the Haram, which surrounds uh, Mecca, or outside? Kana aliman aw jahilan. Was he aware or ignorant? Qatalahu amdan aw khata'an. Killed him with intention or unintentionally. Hurran kana al muhrimu am abda. Was he a free man or a slave? Sagiran kana am kabira. Was he young, a child, a young person, or an adult? Mubtadi am bil qatli aw mu'ida. Was he first timer to hunt, or he did it before? Min dhawat al tayri kana al saydi am min ghayriha. This hunt was a bird or an animal. Min sigar al saydi am min kibariha. Was it a small animal or big? مُصِرًّا عَلَى مَا فَعَلَ أَوْ نَادِمَا Was he persistent on what he did or he was remorseful? فِي اللَّيْلِ كَانَ قَتْلُهُ لِلصَّيْدِ أَمْ فِي النَّهَارِ Did he do the hunt during the day or the night? مُحْرِمًا كَانَ بِالْعُمْرَةِ أَمْ بِالْحَجِّ Was he in the ihram of the umrah? You know when we go to hajj, we do the umrah, umrah al-tamattu' and then the second ihram for hajj. So which one? This man, the chief justice, was dumbfounded. He did not know what to do. Very, he asked the Imam one question, Imam asked him 20 questions. Imam told him to specify your question. All these have answers. He said, I don't know. I really don't know. فَتَحَيَّرَ يَحْيَى بْنُ أَكْثَمْ He was bewildered. وَبَانَ فِي وَجْهِهِ الْعَجْزِ You could see in his face the failure and the inability, inability. وَالْإِنْقِطَاعِ And he started stammering. He did not know what to say. So Ma'mun turned to him and he said, Do you know? Do you see this man? This is from a special family, special tree. Those are the most knowledgeable on the surface of earth. And then the Imam started to answer. To answer. In المحرم إذا قتل صيدا في الحل if he in the state of Ihram and he kills him outside the area of Mecca وكان الصيد من ذوات الطير وكان من كبارها فعليه شاتون and then he started giving the many options here in this in this question and then the Imam Ma'mun said to the Imam al-Jawad you ask this man Yahya ibn Aktham a question to see his ability, whether he can answer or not. So the Imam said to him, أَخْبَرْنِي عَنْ رَجُلٍ نَظَرَ إِلَى مْرَأَةٍ فِي أَوَّلِ النَّهَارِ He saw a lady in the beginning of the day. فَكَانَ نَظَرُهُ إِلَيْهَا حَرَامًا It was unlawful to look at her in the beginning of the day. Two hours later, فَلَمَّا ارْتَفَعَ النَّهَارِ حَلَّتْ لَهُ She became lawful for him to see her, to touch her. فَلَمَّا زَالَتْ الشَّمْسِ At noon time, حرمت عليه. She became unlawful to him again. فلما كان وقت العصر in the afternoon حلت له. She became lawful to him. فلما غربت الشمس 
at sunset harumat alayh she became unlawful to him falamma dakhala waqtu al-isha' al-akhirah hallat lahu at the time of isha she became lawful to him falamma kana waqtu intisaf al-layl harumat alayh at midnight she became unlawful to him falamma talu' al-fajr at dawn hallat lahu she became lawful to him ma halu hadhihi al-mara again yahya ibn aktham was lost completely lost He's the chief justice, and he's supposed to be the most knowledgeable. فَقَالَ وَاللَّهِ لَا أَهْتَدِي إِلَى جَوَابِ هَذَا السُّعَالِ I really don't know what to say. أنا وَرْ وَلَا أَعْرِفُ الْوَجْهَ فِيهِ I don't even know what, what to tell you. I'm lost. I'm confused. فَقَالَ أَبُو جَعْفَرْ Imam Al-Jawad answered this question. قَالَ هَذِهِ أَمَةٌ لِرَجُلٍ مِنَ النَّاسِ this lady that I'm talking about, the example I'm giving, she's a bondmaid, a female slave, owned by someone. Someone else looked at her, maybe with desire, it's haram for him, he cannot. But then, النهار, he later on, after two hours, he purchased her from the owner, so she becomes lawful to him. فَلَمَّا كَانَ عِنْدَ الظُّهُرِ At noon time, he freed her for the sake of God, freeing a slave. So then she becomes unlawful for him to see her or touch her. فَلَمَّا كَانَ وَقْتُ الْعَصْرِ At afternoon, he married her. So she becomes halal for him, again lawful. At maghrib time, sunset, ظَاهَرَهَا ظَاهَرَهَا It's found in Surah Al-Mujadala, 59, 58, sorry, in the Quran, the dispute. Al-Ladheena yuzahiruna minkum min nisa'ihim ma hunna ummahatuhum. This is a pre-Islamic customs called dhihar, where the husband renounces her wife. Anti alayya ka dhahri ummi. So at that time, he said to her this sentence, so she becomes unlawful to him. At isha' time, he gave expiation, penalty for what he said. So she comes back to him and she becomes lawful to him. At midnight, he divorces her. So she becomes unlawful to him again. At Fajr, he brings her back into marriage. So she becomes lawful. This is the answer to this very intricate puzzle, which Yahya ibn Aktham did not know. And this Imam is a teenager here. And then there is another story of the Imam, where someone was brought to Al-Mu'tasim al-Abbasi, who murdered the Imam, and he admitted that he committed an act of theft. The place, the session was packed with the scholars. So the caliph asked the scholars while the Imam Muhammad al-Jawad is sitting. He said to them, how do we execute the had, the penalty on this man, the penal code? Someone said, you cut his hand from the palm, from the wrist here, this area. This is the wrist. So you cut his hand. He said, how do you say that he said because the Quran says the Quran speaks about the yet famsahu bi wujuhikum wa aidikum this is the yet he turned to another scholar another scholar said to him no you have to cut it from here the elbow because the Quran says ila al-marafiq idha qumtum ila salati faqsulu wujuhakum wa aidikum ila al-marafiq from the elbows so this is the arm so you must cut it from here. Mu'tasim, the caliph, was not convinced. He turned to Imam al-Ridha, Imam al-Jawad, sorry, Muhammad al-Jawad. He said to him, Yabna Rasulullah, what do you say about this? Imam said, excuse me, you know, they said their opinions, so follow their opinions. But Mu'tasim knew their opinions would not, was not correct. And the Imam, Imam Muhammad al-Jawad, has the right answer. So he insisted on him. He said, please, you are the grandson of the Prophet. You have to give me your opinion. He said, then if you insist on me, 
and I have no choice, I'm going to give you my opinion. God says in Surah Al-Jinn, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Masajid, it could be places of worship, masjid, a mosque, or it could be the positions of sujood, which are seven. One, two, three, the knees, right and left, and the toes. Altogether seven. And the Prophet said, these are the seven places which are the places of sujood in the human body. And it has to be preserved for God. It should not be taken away. If you cut his hand from the arm or the wrist, you are depriving him from sujood, from an important position of sujood. And God says, فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Do not let anyone share these positions with God. Keep them for God. So he said then from where? He said from Ru'usul Mafasil, the tip of his fingers. Tip, small part. Because if you take his arm, his hand from him, and suppose he's a breadwinner, how can he sustain his family? And Islam here is not intending to revenge or to punish. It's a lesson. It's a lesson. He doesn't want to deprive this person from his livelihood. Al-Mu'tasim said, this is the right answer. This is the right answer. This is briefly some aspects of the life of the ninth Imam, Al-Imam Muhammad ibn Ali al-Jawad. Salamullahi alayhi. May Allah gather us on the Day of Judgment with all our Imams. And keep us on the path of al-shajar al-tayyibah. This is a beautiful tree. This is a beautiful family, where God says about them, "Inna ma yuridu Allah liyudhiba ankum al-rizqa ahl al-bayt wa yutahhirakum tatira." My condolences to all of you on the departure, the martyrdom of our ninth Imam, Al-Imam Muhammad ibn Ali al-Jawad. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.